in this mini clinical examination session in the clinical snippet we will be examining the palpation part of respiratory system subject will be there and we will go for the palpation in respiratory system in the clinical snippet we already have showed you a mini clinical examination part of tactile vocal fremitus in detail and as far as apex beat is concerned we are planning that apex beat part will be taken in the cardiology mini cx examination sessions so in this in this mini clinical examination we will be concentrating on my student will concentrate on palpating and assessing the chest expansion the methods to assess the chest expansion movements chest movements and various measurements that are important in assessing palpation part of respiratory system examination so various measurement means that is the chest expansion hemithorax measurement ap diameter and transverse diameter measurement and spinoscapular distance measurement and all these things will be included only in this clinical snippet apex beat and tactile vocal fremitus out of this as i told tactile vocal fremitus is already done in a different snippet separately apex beat we will be trying to cover cover it in the cardiology mini clinical examination sessions good morning dr faisal दादा मैं आपकी तपासनी करना चाहता हूँ क्या मुझे आपकी परमिशन है yeah. मैं आपको लंबी सांस लेने के लिए बोलूंगा और हाथ अपने छाती पे रखूंगा तब मैं छाती पे हाथ रखूं और बोलूं सांस लेने के लिए तो आपको लंबी सांस लेनी है और लंबी सांस छोड़नी है लंबी सांस लीजिए छोड़िए फर्स्ट वील कीप देंड्स ऑन द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द चेस्ट विद थम्स इन द मिड लाइन एंड देन वील आज द पेशेंट टू टेक डीप इंस्पिरेशन लंबी सांस लो और छोड़ो ठीक है एक मिनट हाँ लंबी सांस लो और छोड़ो देन विल एग्जामिन इन द लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द चेस्ट लंबी सांस लीजिए छोड़िए नाउ वील लुक फॉर द चेस्ट मूवमेंट इन द पोस्टियर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द चेस्ट वील प्लेस द हैंड्स इन द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द चेस्ट एंड देन द पेशेंट विल इंस्पायर सांस लीजिए एज यू कैन सी द बकेट हैंडल मूवमेंट ऑफ द हैंड्स then we look for the chest movements in the lower aspect let me search this as you can see the uh, chest wall movements are equal anteriorly and posteriorly now the uh, conditions in which there is decreased chest wall movements unilaterally are hydrothorax pneumothorax pleural effusion fibrosis and collapse now bilaterally decreased causes of uh, uh, decreased movements are emphysema end stage bronchial asthma and ankylosing spondylitis now we we'll look for the measurements of the chest wall first we we'll assess the anterior posterior diameter and the transverse diameter for that we require two cardboards first for the ap diameter we'll keep the cardboard in the anterior part of the chest then the posterior part of the chest now we will use a measuring tape to measure the distance between the anterior aspect and the posterior aspect as you can see the distance is 26 cm now similarly we look for the transverse diameter in this the transverse diameter is measured by keeping the cardboards like this and the patient is asked to just approximate the two cardboards then the distance is measured here the distance is 32 cm the normal ap to transverse ratio is 5 is to 7 in a normal individual if the ap transverse diameter is 1 is to 1 then there is a hyperinflated condition like emphysema so then we look for the chest expansion we'll uh, put the measuring tape at the fourth intercostal space at the level of nipples and we'll use a cross tape method as you can see the measuring tape is placed at the fourth intercostal space and the distance is measured so the chest circumference is 90 cm and then the patient is asked to take deep inspiration as you can see on deep inspiration the patient's chest circumference is increased 
by 4 cm. So that's why we say that the patient is normal and in abnormal conditions where the, uh, there is a restriction of chest wall movement, the chest circumference is decreased less than 2 cm. Now we look for the measurement of hemithorax. In this, we will keep the measuring tape at the midpoint at the 4th intercostal space. Then we will measure the distance till the spine of the vertebra. And we will ask the patient to take deep inspiration. As you can see, on inspiration, the hemithorax distance is increased. Similarly, we will check for the uh, hemithorax on the left side. We will keep the measuring tape at the midline, 4th intercostal space. Then in the back side, then the patient is asked to take deep inspiration. The, as you can see, the movement of measuring tape is seen. Now we will look for the spinoscapular distance. For this, the patient is asked to keep his hands in a crisscross manner. Now we will palpate for the spinous process of the scapula, which corresponds to the spinous process of the D3 vertebra. We will measure the distance between the spinous process of scapula and the spinous process of D3 vertebra. As you can see, it is 5 cm on the right side. Similarly, we look for the uh, spinous process of scapula on the left side, which corresponds to the D3 vertebra and the distance is measured, it is 5 cm, which is equal on both sides. So, we will correlate as a normal finding. Okay, Dr. Faizal, you have completed the palpation part in the respiratory examination. And uh, you have assessed first the chest expansion by putting your hand and looking in the anterior chest wall, posteriorly and the apical part of the chest wall on the shoulder. So what was your finding? Uh, what was your conclusion? The chest expansion was equal on both sides. The chest expansion was equal on both sides. Okay. So what are the conditions, like you already said, let us revise it. What are the conditions where the chest expansion is bilaterally hampered? The chest expansion is decreased bilaterally in uh, emphysema and late stage of asthma and ankylosing spondylitis. Okay. So when we say that the chest expansion is diminished, what is the cutoff level? What is the normal range of chest expansion? Uh, if the chest expansion is less than 2 cm, we will say that so, the chest expansion. Very good. The chest expansion less than 2 cm means the range is actually between 2 to 5 cm. So, any subject with a normal subject, the chest expansion should be at least between 2 to 5 cm. If it is less than 2 cm bilaterally, then you have already enumerated the causes. Then you, uh, you went for the hemithorax, that is the unilateral chest expansion. So, again, it is the same formula 2 to 5 cm it expands. So, what are the conditions when there is unilateral diminution of chest expansion? Fusal effusion, hydrothorax, pneumothorax, hydro-pneumothorax and collapse or fibrosis. So collapse, fibrosis, pneumo, hydro and hydro-pneumothorax, yes, correct. Then we went for the spinoscapular distance, okay. So correctly you demonstrated how, how to take the, uh, how, how to go to the spinoscapular distance. And in which conditions there is asymmetry in the spinoscapular distance, if at all there is a diminution in one side of the spinoscapular distance. Here you demonstrated 5 cm to 5 cm. Say for example, in left there is 5 cm, in right it was say 2 cm. What will be the interpretation? Mm, so it can be in fibrosis? Yes, it actually occurs in fibrosis. Because in long standing fibrosis, there is abnormally with the chest wall, the shoulder is true, and the fibrotic chest wall causes diminution of the piston in the spinous structure. Along with, you will get other signs of fibrosis like drooping of shoulder, retraction of the chest wall, diminution of movement. There, your hemithorax will also come into play. You will see that the hemithorax is diminished. So, uh, then we went for the epidiameter and, uh, and transverse diameter. Here it was, the ratio was, I know, 5 by 7. But if it is 1 is to 1 hyperinflated chest, we will answer by wind that we call it. That is an emphysema, by the separate chest, and that is the abnormal. So, in total, to summarize, in the part of uh, uh, palpation of the chest, when we go in the special examination, we have to assess number one that the chest chest expansion. Then we go for various measurements. In the measurements, we will go for the bilateral measurement of chest expansion, then unilateral hemiparax measurement. Then we go for the 
epidermic ring thrombocytopenia and fibrosaccharidosis and we interpret accordingly as per the pathology thank you causes of decreased chest wall movement unilaterally are pleural effusion hydrothorax pneumothorax hydropneumothorax empyema consolidation fibrosis and collapse causes of bile end stage bronchial asthma acute uh, ankylosing spondylitis obesity now ap2 transverse ratio normally in an individual is 5 to 7 if there is a hyperinflated lung condition like emphysema the ap is to transverse ratio becomes 1 is to 1 with barrel shaped chest palpation in the respiratory system also includes palpation of trachea and tactile vocal fremitus and apex bead we have already completed tactile vocal fremitus and palpation of trachea and we will do a dedicated video on apex bead